Well, welcome to our town hall uh, discussing uh, strategies and tactics that you can use for job searching, internship searching in this kind of odd time that we've got going on here. Um, we've got a really wonderful uh, group of people from all across the campus uh, here to answer some questions, any questions that you might have. And, and if you have questions, please type them into the chat feature here on Zoom and we'll get to them. Um, I just want to do a quick introduction of who, who's representing career services here uh, on the panel. So uh, my name is Tess Serpernant. I am the director of the Block Career Center and the interim director of UMKC Career Services. So I oversee both of the, those two offices. We also have Molly Walensky here, who is the director of the uh, career services for the law school. Uh, we have Maggie Rayland, who is one of our, well, our career and professional development uh, manager for the Block Career Center. And Erin uh, Christensen, who does employer relations for, for UMKC and the Block School. And so she's out there talking to employers, uh, building those connections, getting them to post positions and hire our students here. We have Allison Murdoch from the UMKC Career Services Office, and we have Jean Pegler, who's with graduate programs at the Block School, but uh, Jean also has tremendous experience and knowledge about uh, graduate programs in general here at UMKC. And finally, we have Erin Ireland, who is one of our uh, student assistant workers in the Career Center at the Block Career Center. And, uh, she, she can also give some perspective on what this is like from a student perspective. And, and so we're, we're here, all of us are here to answer your questions, any questions that you might have. So, um, yeah, so the Q&A feature is open, the chat feature is open. If you have questions you'd like to submit, I'll be sharing different links throughout the conversation today so that you can keep track of all of the information that we're putting out there. But just to, to kick us off with a few questions, um, one question that we've been getting a lot is regarding full-time jobs and if anyone in Kansas City is still hiring. So um, Tess, Erin, if you wanna jump in and talk about sort of what the market in Kansas City looks like for full-time jobs, and then maybe tag on some information about internships too, that would be really helpful. Definitely full-time jobs available. There are definitely companies that are hiring for full-time professional positions. Um, so all is not lost. <laughs> so um, I'm going to throw it over to Erin because Erin has been reaching out and talking to so many employers and, and different organizations across Kansas City to find out sort of what the lay of the land is here. So Erin, why don't you share with us some of what you've learned? Yeah, yeah. So like Tess said, companies are still hiring. Um, I think, and we've talked about this in our office, I think students, as you're looking for opportunities, maybe kind of resetting what you initially thought you would want to do um, and just having a different perspective because you can definitely transition your skills that you've learned um, into some different roles that, and that would give you other experiences that you might not have thought of. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. And that's where Maggie and Allison and even Tess come in um, um, as they're coaching you through that process. Um, I just talked to um, Select Quote yesterday. They are hiring um, like crazy, not just in sales, but in different corporate functions as well. Um, and they also are, are continuing with their summer intern class and they're committed to supporting um, there are 20 or so interns in a virtual way this summer. Um, so that's one just off the top of my head. Waddell and Reed is another one. They are a financial services company that is headquartered here in Kansas City, and they are still fully hiring for um, full-time positions as well. Um, I think it's also important to keep in mind that it's still a good time to keep networking and keep that network open as well. So there are companies that we know have just put a pause on hiring until they kind of figure out what the next couple of months look like. And then they fully plan on restarting that in the next couple of months. And they may have even restarted it now, now that people are starting to return to their offices soon. Um, but when this, when COVID initially happened and everyone started working from home, they put a pause on hiring 
So it's still really important to keep that networking piece um, going and um, stay in that pipeline with employers as well. And that was something when I was talking to Select Quote yesterday, she can't, she could not um, uh, express um, the value of networking, especially during this time, um, enough to students that staying in the pipeline and staying in contact with recruiters is 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 really important right now. And again, that's where our office comes into play. So as you're meeting with Maggie, Tess, or Allison, and you're finding opportunities, and but you don't know who to reach out to, they contact me and um, and I, I find those individuals for students to directly reach out to to start that networking process. So I know that we preach networking a lot and, and usually it's the thing that students don't want to hear um, because it can seem kind of intimidated to do the networking. Uh, and when we talk networking, it's not, it's not really this sort of trying to sell somebody on you or trying to convince them to help you. Um, it's, it's really just more about being curious about them, showing an interest in what they do, what their organization's about, and, and just building a little bit of a connection so that when things open up and, and that organization starts getting you know, sort of glutted with applications for these jobs, your name just pops out or your the person that you've spoken to maybe ever so briefly you could just send a follow up email saying uh, I really enjoyed talking to you I'd notice you just posted a position I'm really interested in joining your organization do you have any tips or suggestions that might make me a better candidate you don't want to ask them for a job um, but but oftentimes then that person turns around and says send me your resume I'll make sure it gets in front of the hiring manager and that's what helps to get your, your resume pulled out of that stack of electronic resume. So it doesn't have to be this big, huge process, um, but it is pretty vital to, to sort of distinguish yourself from all of the others. Yeah, well, in the example that Select Quote gave yesterday, and it was actually a UMPC student, he had, he came to our fall career fair and talked to them there. He came to our spring career fair. He came to their information table. And for what he was wanting to do, they just didn't have any openings yet. And then as soon as they had an opening, she immediately thought of him and brought him in for an interview. And now he'll be starting full time with them this summer. And so she said, just having those three different points of contact with that student, just put him at the forefront of my mind. And like Tess said, it's not about necessarily going to these networking events or, you know, trying to really have those cold conversations with with employers, it's just they're on campus for a reason, and that's to talk to students, and, and they don't mind getting those LinkedIn messages, those cold LinkedIn messages or emails from students either. And, and again, that's where we can come into play and help you make those connections. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Maggie, I see we have some questions. Yeah. yeah, we do. So Jacob, thank you for submitting your question. Uh, Jacob will be a sophomore this coming academic year and was wondering um, about summer jobs, I assume part-time or internships uh, for the summer. Uh, you said you might be going to American Vista or, or, or for Propel. And um, everything that we post is on Handshake. So I'll share that link with you um, in the chat here for everybody to see. But Handshake is where we post all of our part-time, full-time, and internship opportunities, upcoming events. It's how you make appointments with our office. It is sort of the beating heart of career services at UMKC. Um, and Tess and Jean and Molly, if you have heard anything more about sort of student positions, on campus this summer. Um, I know we are on a hiring freeze currently, but you three would probably know better than I um, sort of what the outlook looks like for student positions on campus. Tess, I'll go. Um, so, you know, here's the thing. Uh, some limitations with regard to graduate assistantships and, and student jobs probably this particular year. Um, however, it's always good to maintain those relationships with the different offices you've worked for in the past or ones that you're thinking about working with because we never know sometimes there's there's an ease in the hiring and we can when we really have a need we find some money and we're able to do that kind of thing so again build those relationships with with your on-campus contacts stay in touch with folks 
and you never know, there may be some opportunities that do pop up. I'll also say our fiscal year ends June 30th. Um, so even though things might be a little bit tight because right now we're coming to the end of the fiscal year and you know things have changed a lot since we budgeted for this year um, uh, over a year ago. So, but with the start of the new fiscal year, oftentimes a lot of things sort of open up and change. So, so even if the, you're seeing that there's not on-campus jobs here May and June, don't, don't give up hope, check back July 1. And Jacob, it sounded like you mentioned wanting to receive those job opportunities through Outlook. I believe once you get signed up for Handshake and you're looking through the job and opportunities on that site, you can set up alerts to go to your Outlook so that you don't have to keep logging into that system. I know it's a pain that there are so many systems at UMKC for you to get logged into all the time, but if you just go on to Handshake once and set up some alerts, and I think there are some directions on how to do that, Maggie, um, that then you can get um, alerts about upcoming summer opportunities or upcoming academic year opportunities straight into your outlook and that way it makes it a whole lot easier and you don't have to do very much work to be alerted to new opportunities for you to apply to. Molly that's a great point and adding on to that too if you go in and more fully flesh out your profile on Handshake so not just activating your account but actually stating some interests and um, the more you fill out your profile, the more easily you're found by employers, as well as it's easier for the handshake system to identify sort of good fit positions for you. And so it's really in your advantage to, to just put a little bit more information there. It's a secure site, uh, so you, it's, it's only those employers that, that you know, we vetted out um, so it's not quite as public as, as filling out a LinkedIn profile, um, but really could have some positive outcomes if you, if you take full advantage of it. Here in Ireland, do you wanna speak a little bit to using Handshake as a student and some of the messages that you have received directly um, via Handshake because you had a pretty filled out profile? Yeah, um, so if your profile is more filled out, you are more likely to show up on employers' websites. Um, because they use like tags and search for specific, um, maybe GPA, maybe your school year. Um, they have the power to search for all of that. So you're more likely to show up if you kind of fill it all out. Um, if you need examples on different like profiles to look at, you're more than welcome to search my name. Um, I'm pretty sure as a student, you can look at other students' profiles as far as I know. <laughs> um, but then once you have all that filled out, it's super easy just to save it and then continue to go up and update it. Um, on the like student side of Handshake, all you have to do also is set your employer search ability to, it's like something that says um, ability to find me. And then that will allow you to kind of open up a lot more opportunities. So Erin, were you ever approached by recruiters that you hadn't applied for jobs, but they'd found you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, a lot of times recruiters will just like send a message to your inbox on Handshake that says, um, I think one of the most recent ones was, we have this position. We noticed that you're a management student. Um, that's the type of student we're looking to fill. Would love to set up a conversation with you. Um, and then, you know, you have the opportunity to respond with, I'd love to chat, or maybe I already have an opportunity, but thank you so much for like reaching out. Can I connect with you on LinkedIn? So. Makes, it, makes your job search a lot easier when they come looking for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And we have dozens of success stories in terms of students who have been sort of cold reached out to via handshake and had conversations with recruiters and turned into a really meaningful internship and full-time job opportunity. So um, not to repeat everything that's been said, but fill out that handshake profile because it's so, so important. Uh, we just got can another say, Can question. I just follow, Maggie, can okay. I just add one comment to Jacob? So Jacob had said that he was a sophomore 
So it is sometimes a little bit more challenging to find an internship as a, following your freshman year or your sophomore year because a lot of the, especially the larger organizations, are looking for people to, for internships in your following your junior year. So a strategy, if you're finding you're not getting a lot of traction with some of those bigger name organizations, um, start looking at some of the smaller ones. More and more internships are paid, whether it's with a large organization or a small organization, and that, that smaller organization after your sophomore year can give you this really wonderful base experience that then makes you that great candidate for the internship following your junior year. So again, like Erin was saying earlier, sometimes you have to kind of broaden your net of what might seem interesting to you, what types of organizations, uh, so that you can get that experience. And it doesn't mean you're locking into something right now. It just means that you're getting a sample of that experience, which is going to be a good foundation for the next. Absolutely. So I'm going to move on to a question about networking and then Jean, we have a question about grad school. So uh, the networking question is what are effective ways to network during quarantine and are there any job fairs or other events that UMKC might host this summer, um, especially for graduating seniors. Do you want me to take this one. Oh yeah. go. For it. <laughs> So um, regarding job fairs, we normally don't have um, summer, just like how higher education is, just in, tends to be a slower time for us because there aren't as many students taking classes on campus. And with how employers have their typical hiring timeline, summer doesn't fall within that um, high volume hiring. With that said, though, we're not in a typical <laughs> Um, academic year and so we are looking at ways to still provide virtual opportunities whether it's programming with our office or networking with employers um, over the summer um, just to throw an idea out there that Maggie and I have discussed is doing these um, panels um, by industry so having you know some folks from public accounting um, engineering um, it's so these different healthcare these different industries talking about what hiring looks like currently for their industry and just tips and tricks to give students. Those are great ways to network because you attend and you get the contact information for those panelists and then um, you can follow up with them after. And then like Tess and I were talking about, it doesn't, networking doesn't need to be through an event necessarily. If there's a job that you find interesting, say on LinkedIn and you have the recruiter that's listed with that job, you can just shoot them an email or a LinkedIn message. And again, our coaches are happy to help you format um, that message as well. Um, if they aren't listed, sometimes those postings aren't listed or in Handshake, you might not necessarily have the contact information for that company. We can help you get it and you can just, you can reach out to them directly as well. So networking right now in this virtual space looks a little bit different than if we were on campus, but, um, I feel like it's almost more comfortable because you're not having, if you're not used to it, you're not having to have that face-to-face -face interaction that um, if you're not used to it can be somewhat uncomfortable. So having, um, there's a little bit of safety when it comes to the virtual piece and, um, and employers understand um, that this is how everything is working right now. So they're very receptive to getting those messages through LinkedIn or those emails or having having you ask them questions during events such as this that we're hosting via Zoom. Um, so keep the lookout on Handshake. We post all, all of our events on Handshake and on our website um, for um, further events and um, that we'll continue to host throughout the summer. I just shared a couple of links as well. We put together um, in the block school a COVID-19 sort of career guide uh, that tests put together that includes remote opportunities, freelance opportunities, full-time opportunities. Um, it includes a great list that Team KC with the KC ADC has put together that they're updating, updating all the time with companies in the Kansas City area that are hiring. A lot of those opportunities are also on Handshake, but definitely check both places. Um, and then also our office is really trying to push out as much YouTube content as possible during this. Everything from our workshops that we would normally do in person um, to help you brush up on things like LinkedIn, your resumes, um, interviewing. Um, and then Erin has been hosting some different chats about um, online interviewing or um, 
linked basically how to maximize your LinkedIn profile so that it, it stands out to employers with employers. So those are all going to be, if they're not already on our YouTube channel, um, the LinkedIn one hits later this week, which is exciting. That was a conversation Aaron did with select quote. Um, so we're just trying to also pump out as much content as possible to help you prepare for those jobs and internships that you're going to be applying for. Maggie, can you also send out the link for the UMKC page on LinkedIn uh, so that students can see where they can find alumni from UMKC yeah. on LinkedIn? Which Absolutely. I think is also a really great way to find some contacts to, to reach out and do some networking. You know, it's the, the, I think the worst part of networking is you think it's kind of like cold calling and you're you're just calling up or reaching out or emailing, texting this complete stranger. Um, but the nice thing about reaching out to alumni of UMKC is that regardless of what your, you know, what your industry, what your role, what, what you want to do, there's probably a UMKC alum who's working at that organization or in that type of job. And it's just a really easy way to start the conversation that um, I see you're an alum. I'd love to to pick your brain or ask you about your career. And and really, there's a wide variety of, of, of roles that are represented on LinkedIn. So it's not just business roles. If you're interested in advertising, if you're interested in uh, hospital administration, if you're interested in engineering or computer science, um, there's people on LinkedIn that, that I'm sure are happy to chat with you, even if you don't know them. Yeah, so that link I just sent out, that's the general UMKC page, and then there is a bar on the left, and it says alumni, and you click on that, and you can search for anything from uh, alumni by company, alumni by industry, by job title, by year of graduation. It gives you a lot of functionality to be able to search for alumni, so that's, um, that's a great place to start with your networking. All right, Gene, I'm going to turn it over for you. Yeah, so the question that came in is, is it reasonable to expect that colleges and universities should figure should have figured out a contingency contingency plan for uh, the 2021 uh, academic year? And so, as we know, COVID-19 has become a very fluid situation where we um, have some uncertainty about as we will open back up the economy and as we move into um, kind of getting back to that normal stage of life and, and whatnot and what that looked like. Um, there could be an uptick in, in uh, the virus and things like that. So for instance, at UMKC, we do have every plan, our plan is to, you know, resume classes in person, um, also have some online opportunities, but we, we are thinking through social distancing. Um, so what does that look like from a classroom capacity? So if you have a classroom that seats 60 students, do we need to you know, kind of cap that at 30 and think about about alternating nights. So there's a number of fluid things that are happening and we're still, um, you know, just making sure that we can keep everybody safe. And so a lot of schools and universities are looking at that kind of uh, those kind of options as well. Um, with that being said, you know, the intention is to kind of kind of move back into a, a spot where we're going to be able to offer on campus and uh, uh, options. Uh, the best thing I could say for students that have these concerns, if you haven't heard from your, your school in a little bit, is reach out to that academic advisor. Um, they're usually usually in the know and they can they can best advise you on the plans that the school has uh, moving forward. Um, and then typically, you know, for my particular office, we have about five different graduate programs. We will be communicating with students here over the summer about uh, our, our orientation, uh, we may offer that in an online format this particular time, um, but also have some opportunities to utilize the services of career services and, and things like that. So yes, while we all want to know and come up with that plan for the fall term, it is still a bit of a fluid situation. So work with that school that you've applied to, talk to them, get to know where they're at on things, and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to, to get everything sorted out for you here shortly. Jean, do you want to speak a yeah. little bit to um, also why grad school might be something really interesting and important to consider for the fall? Yeah, so as we kind of uh, think about the economy and the job opportunities that are out there, um, your dream job may not quite be available at this time. I would still say there's a number of great opportunities and you can get a ton of experience, but grad school can be another great option. Um, 
So some things to consider when you're looking at grad school. Uh, a lot of schools, or my law school colleague with Molly, um, may some, some schools may have extended their deadlines. So when you're looking at professional schools like uh, law school or pharmacy, dental, um, it's important to kind of check in and see what their deadlines might be. Um, they may have moved their fall intake a little bit as well um, for certain programs. Um, so those are things to check into. Uh, many professional programs have really a one time of year intake, so it might be they only take students in the fall semester, so that's something to consider. Uh, but other programs like our MBA program at, at UMKC or our School of Education programs, uh, programs in biology and chemistry, may have multiple entry points, so you may be able to do some planning around that if fall is still an option for the MBA and many of our graduate programs, so it may be a great opportunity to say, hey, you know what, let me look at grad school, maybe sit out a year. Uh, from the from the job market and go to grad school. It'll give you a great resume builder and really provide you some additional insight. Um, you'll want to really uh, take a close look at at what is needed for the application through this process as well, because every school has a little different process as you move as you look at grad schools. Uh, for instance, um, in addition to the application, schools are going to typically want transcripts from any and all institutions that you've attended. Uh, they may want a resume, a goal statement, letters of recommendation. Um, they also, depending on the school, might need uh, licensure or background information. Um, schools of education typically have you take, you know, make sure you're fingerprinted and things like that. Um, so there, those are all things to consider. And um, and finally, uh, you know, for certain programs, there may be also be an interview process. So you want to make sure that you're getting your things and all your ducks in a row uh, from an application standpoint. So you leave time for that interview process so a school can uh, schedule that interview for you. Um, if you're looking at schools, um, Zoom's been a fantastic way for us to still get to know our students. Um, certain campuses have Zoom tours and different things like that, so you can still be looking at schools, you know, in far off distances that you might want to attend or right here in your own backyard with UMKC. So really take advantage of everything. Reach out to a, to a contact that oversees that graduate program um, and, and really get to know them because they can help you through this process. I really want to stress that point, Jean, that I know that you're great about this, and I know that a lot of the different programs around campus, the, the, it's perfectly fine to reach out to people before you apply. Mm -hmm. you, you, they, they really would prefer that the first time they hear from you isn't the application, Absolutely. Um, that they, they've had that conversation before, and then they understand you a little bit. They can give you some tips and tricks. They can make sure that you understand exactly what's going to be needed along the process and make it a lot smoother for you. So it's not one of those things where you have to figure this all out on your own and then submit it and then hope for the best. Um, this is another one where, you know, build those connections. And, and in this case, those connections are the people within those, those graduate school programs who really want to hear from you. Yeah, the more you get to know the person making the decision on your graduate application, the better off you're going to be. The, the more they know you and know about you and what you have to offer really helps when making that decision to admit or, or not. Absolutely. Thank you. So this is a question that um, Allison actually sent me yesterday, and I think it's, it's a great question, and it's one that I have been receiving a lot in my coaching sessions. And Allison, if you want to kick us off with this too, you absolutely can. But um, I've applied to multiple positions, but I'm not hearing back from anyone. What should I do? Yeah, so I, I literally got that question yesterday. <laughs> um, and so I basically just advise that it's okay to reach out to these companies after you've applied and you just haven't heard back. Um, again, it's kind of that networking piece too. They kind of get to hear from you. It's a little bit more of a personal message. Um, and then also, obviously, you get to know kind of where they're at in their process. Um, and so I've read a lot of articles um, recently in this kind of pandemic time. If you word it in a way that you're really just trying to help them, kind of, and you're really, you're not trying to like get the information for yourself, but you're wording it where you're helping them make the decision. What's easier? How, how can you help them? Um, can you provide additional information? Things like that to make their lives easier in this process. They're really going to really going to appreciate that. Um, and also, I also suggested that, um, what did I suggest? <laughs> 
like my brain just went blank. Um, but yeah, I really suggest just reaching out via email um, ahead of, or, oh, she said her question also was, which this may be a case as well as we go through the pandemic. Um, she's applying to positions outside of the Kansas City area as well. And so she was concerned that because she didn't have a, an address, she was applying somewhere in Texas. Because she didn't have a Texas address, then maybe that was deterring them from reaching out to her or um, pulling her through that process. Um, and I and I let her know that there there is a good way, uh, along with um, reaching out to applications you've already submitted and just reiterating that you are willing to um, relocate, um, how you are really interested in the position and in the company and things like that. Um, but also when you apply to new positions, if you're, re if you're willing to relocate, state that in your cover letter. Um, let them know up front and just kind of reiterate what they may already be suspecting, but they don't 100% know, and that can give you a really good chance too. Um, but yeah, I don't know if anybody else has something that they want to chime in with. I, Aaron and I actually have had conversations uh, specifically about looking outside of Kansas City lately and, you know, I think it can be a really good idea to broaden your search if you're willing to move, especially for any of our attendees or anyone watching this video who might be an international student. Um, sometimes you might have a better opportunity to get that OPT if you are willing to look in areas outside of Kansas City. And, and honestly, and, and we've had a lot of conversations in our office, sometimes, you know, it might not be going to the biggest cities in the country. It might be looking at more rural areas where they have a hard time attracting talent and they might be willing to sponsor because they don't get as many applicants. So I definitely think expanding your horizons, especially during, you know, a pandemic, I mean, you want to, you want to expand your horizons as much as possible and, and apply to as many places as you can. And always, if you're looking for a job outside of your, your current geographic region, allow extra time. It's just, it's a longer process. And, and so this isn't one to put off to the last minute if you can help it, um, but give yourself a little bit more time. Yeah, and just be patient anyways. Um, this is crazy time for everyone. Organizations are taking a lot longer to go through the process, make decisions and reach out to candidates. Um, so I think it's just important to be patient. Um, if, you, if you really feel like you should have heard back by then, go ahead and reach out. Um, but yeah, this is, this is, they're going to see a lot of delays during this time in the, in the application process. So patience is going to be key and adaptability is going to be key. And I think sometimes um, I hear students will say, I've applied for five jobs and, and I haven't heard from any of them. And, and, you know, five isn't very many. <laughs> so uh, when you consider the statistics that say that uh, when you apply, online or uh, electronically for a position, the response rate just to get a phone call for a phone interview um, is about one to 3%, which means it's, the odds are, <laughs> are not great anyway. So if you're only hand, applying for a handful of sort of your dream jobs, um, you, you better be doing a lot of networking to, to kind of improve your, your odds there. But also just understand it's, it's not a particularly fun process <laughs> and, it, and it's a fair amount of work, even under the best of circumstances. So um, you kind of got to go and kiss a lot of frogs and just like Allie was saying, be patient, um, but, but keep at it and, and come and talk to us because we can give you some tips and tricks and contacts that'll improve your chances and speed up the process a bit. Yeah, I definitely echo that, Tess. They really use career services and you know, they have so many tools and ways to help you guys um, get at least past that entry, that entry phase, you know, make sure the cover letter says the right things so that you have the opportunity to interview. Because if you can get your foot in the door, your, your odds go up immensely. So, so definitely take advantage of these guys. They're, they're fantastic. And I wanted to make a quick plug for job scan because that, uh, yes. is, <laughs> that is probably the best tool that we have access to and because we have access, you have access to um, in terms of the 
the ways that you can get in front of an employer and really raise your chances to get the interview. So I'll put the link in chat, but JobScan is an awesome tool where you basically scan the job description, you scan your resume, and it gives you tailored feedback to help you basically beat an applicant tracking system. So if you're especially applying for companies, well, really anything, but especially if you're applying for companies that are larger, that likely use an ATS, JobScan is gonna help you um, immensely in tailoring your resume, making sure it includes appropriate buzzwords uh, so that you get passed on beyond the ATS and actually get in front of a recruiter. Hey, and Maggie, can, can I make a plug for your, your meeting with Please. our JobScan rep? So later this week, Maggie is going to be sitting down with a representative from JobScan, and she's going to be giving all sorts of great tips and tricks on how to uh, most effectively use JobScan in your job search. And uh, we'll also be including uh, some of that conversation. We're doing a podcast these days, and so we'll be including some of the highlights of that conversation in our podcast as well. So be, again, going to our career channel on on YouTube and finding all that information. Yeah, and in addition to questions, um, please keep those questions coming in. But if you have topics that you would be interested seeing on our YouTube channel or seeing us put a guide together, um, anything you wanna see, we're happy to, to tackle. So um, in addition to your questions, please feel free to send us in the chat um, any topics you'd like us to, to cover. So I think this is, uh, kind of an important question that we've all been sort of mulling around, but what should students do this summer? You know, if they, if their internships were canceled or they weren't able to do one, or if they're graduating and it's taking a little bit longer to find um, a job than it might normally, you know, outside of networking, what are some things that students can be doing to stay busy and to keep building their resumes? My number one tip is do something. Um, you know, if, if, and regardless of what you're at, where you're at, and I know we have a lot of our graduate students on this also. So whether you're uh, a part-time graduate student and working full-time, whether you're an undergraduate student, whether you're a graduate student, be doing something that, that moves you forward in the career that you want to have. Even if it's not an internship this year and it's not the, your dream job, um, there's still things that you can be doing. You can be doing a lot of informational interviews, these sort of networking things. You can gain great new skills using free online programs. Um, but, but, but be sort of planful in doing something is, is my best advice. As things open up also, you know, look for those volunteer opportunities. Yeah. Uh, that's a great way to network. It's a great way to uh, keep engaged and you never know who you'll, who you'll meet volunteering. And so those are, those are great ways to really, you know, one, do something that makes you feel good because we need that too. Um, but also utilize it as a really neat opportunity to network and, and get to know some folks. Um, so that's definitely something I would, I would recommend. Um, you know, other pieces are, you know, if, if grad school is still a little ways out, utilize the time to get things prepped for what grad school is going to look like, where you might want to go with your career next. So definitely think about that process. Um, and then, you know, again, it's okay to, to take that job that you're, you're not, it's not the dream job yet, but it's okay to take that job that is the intermediary because it shows in this time that you're doing something meaningful and that will show that next employer, hey, yeah, they lost this or they didn't have that or it didn't work pan out right, just right, but they're doing something during some pretty tough circumstances. So that's my, my two cents. I had a, uh, and along the same lines, I have a couple things. So I had an interview yesterday with a student uh, and she had a very long list of work experiences but you can really see, even though it's not, a lot of those experiences weren't at all what she really related to what she'd been applying for. She had learned so much through all of those different types of experiences that she was, she was really able to understand what she could bring to the table, her different skills, her knowledge, things like that, and how they translate to the position she is applying for. And so, like you were saying, even if it's kind of just an intermediate position um, job before you get to your dream job, 
there's a lot to learn and employers are really going to enjoy any type of experience where you've learned skills that translate over. Um, a lot of soft skills will translate over communication, um, knowing how to manage your time, things like that, adaptability, flexibility. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be really important. Um, even if you can't get your dream job, try to get something. If it can be in like more of an intentional position that, you know, like this will translate well, even if you don't think you're going to stay in it for a while, that's ideal. Um, as well as like Tess was saying, volunteer experience is also going to really supplement that if you can get something that's again, going to be relevant to what you want to do moving forward. Yeah, and even we know a lot of our students work while going to school. And so even if you're continuing at the job that you've been working at that's paying your tuition and, and paying your bills up to this point, you know, maybe it's even just a matter of going to your boss and saying, I'd love to learn a little bit more about the management side of, of the job. Or, you know, can you walk me through how you prepare a departmental budget? something that's maybe completely unrelated to the, the job that you have, but it gives you a little bit greater understanding. And think about it if, you know, when the, when the job search or the job market opens up and, and is, is more robust, um, and if somebody asks you, somebody who's on the other side of that interviewing table asks, so, so what did you do during, you know, at that, after that period where you graduated, before the market opened up? Or what did you do when you weren't able to find an internship? What did you do with yourself during that time? You kind of want to be able to have an answer. And, and it, you know, it could be, it could be as simple as, you know, I, I sat down with my boss to learn a lot of different aspects of the business that I'd never really focused on before. And I really understand sort of, you know, the business of fast food or the, you know, uh, whatever it is. Um, or I, I took a class through lynda.com, a free course on the basics of programming um, or, you know, WordPress or whatever. Um, but, but it's good to have something that, that really shows that, that you were committed to self-improvement and that you didn't just waste the time. And I think we're hearing, of course, from students a lot of anxiety about what if I have a gap on my resume? What if I don't have that internship in that key summer between, you know, the junior and senior year? And I think it's just really important to know that you're going to be one of thousands of students across the country who have a little bit of a gap on their resume or who didn't have the internship um, between your junior and senior year. And that's totally okay. And employers are going to be very empathetic and understanding of that fact. So but it is, it does go back to Tessa's point that you should be able to talk about something that you did during this time. Again, it doesn't have to be a formal internship. It's okay that it took you two, three months to find a position after you graduated, as long as you can speak to, you know, doing something meaningful during that time. Yeah. I think Maggie makes an excellent point and it might be worth going back to that LinkedIn link that she provided. She mentioned that you could look up alumni by their graduation year. And even though we haven't been through a pandemic quite like this before, we have been through an economic recession that's been fairly similar. And so looking back at our alumni who graduated in the 08, 09 timeframe, maybe even a year before, a year after, and reaching out to some of them, um, Tess mentioned and Aaron mentioned that that's a form of networking is just reaching out to our alumni and having alumni being the commonality that makes it feel a little bit safer to reach out to them and asking them questions about what they did when they were faced with uncertainty uh, during an economic crisis and getting some ideas and insight, some support um, and acknowledgement that this is a difficult time and that they made it through and what their future looks like can be not only helpful, but hopefully really validating for you all. Oh, Molly, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but what wonderful, wonderful advice. I love that. Well, and yeah, back to what Molly said, many of us were either graduating. I mean, I'm aging myself. I graduated during the recession in 08 or were start working during that time and very much understood how to coach students or had our own personal experiences managing that time. So utilize staff on campus even that have, or faculty on campus that have worked with students through this similar type of experience. Um, 
for me, I knew I wanted to go into higher education. And so I just shut up, I set up shadow opportunities um, during the summers when I wasn't taking my master's level classes. So even right now shadowing is a little bit difficult because people are working from home, but even doing informational interviews in different industries that you would want to work in um, could provide some really valuable experiences and insights as well um, for you to get a better understanding of, of what you want to do and what industries and types of jobs you would want to look into. I completely agree. And I, I also graduated along with Erin during that, that recession. And I took a job right out of school making very little money in the healthcare industry. Didn't really necessarily want to work in the healthcare industry, but I, that was the opportunity that presented itself through networking and, and knowing someone who knew someone. And um, it still got me to where I wanted to be ultimately in my career. So um, I do think sometimes you have to zig and zag a little bit on your career uh, trajectory. Nothing is linear, um, but I think that's totally okay. Um, we do have another question and um, Allison, I'm gonna let you handle this one because this is specifically about sort of what your appointments look like when you when someone comes in to meet with someone in you, the UMKC Career Services Office and just a little bit more specifically about what seniors should be doing to prepare to start job hunting as they're getting ready to graduate. Yeah, so I can start, I guess, with the second question. Um, so I'll list it on here. So that's the uh, appointment with uh, career hunting exploration type appointments. Um, so obviously you're gonna make those appointments through Handshake with either me or Daniel, who's currently on leave, but he's coming back hopefully next month, thank God. <laughs> I've missed him. Um, but also with Tess, if Tess still has those uh, appointment types up on uh, available for her as well. Um, so any one of us, you can make an appointment with. Um, and those are going to be, so we're not going to sit there and tell you where you should go and what you should do. Um, and it's not going to be very direct like that. It's just going to start out with me trying to get to know kind of what you want, um, what you're kind of looking for, um, what ideas you have, if you've looked at any companies, any industries, things like that, just trying to get to know you and where you're wanting to go. Um, and then we can talk about maybe your interests if you're just not sure where you wanna go. Um, so your interests, maybe what you were good at while you were in school, what you enjoyed, things like that. And then we can kind of see if there's a specific industry type of a position that you can maybe be looking for, searching for, um, but it's, it's going to be ultimately tr me trying to push you, not really push you, but kind of like steer you into maybe a research direction um, or a couple of different paths that you can research and kind of compare and things like that. So it's just going to be more of a discussion-based kind of appointment versus me telling you what to do. Um, and we found that these are really helpful because I've had students um, go and research things that we talked about and come back and say, okay, I've narrowed it down. Now can we talk a little bit more about, you know, maybe these two paths and then we can just compare and contrast and we can kind of talk about that. So it's sometimes it's one appointment, one and done. And then sometimes you guys want to come back and we could talk a little bit more and narrow it down even more. So again, it's more discussion based, um, but it really trying to encourage you guys to definitely research and do this kind of build these skills on your own so you may not have to come back and talk to us every time and you can start networking and searching and things like that on your own um and then in regards to the other question uh what steps should seniors take um, now as they prepare for graduation and getting a job during COVID-19 a get your resume reviewed. <laughs> um, that's going to be the first thing. And, and honestly, too, if you can come in with, with a couple of maybe positions, types of positions that you're interested in, uh, maybe some position descriptions, we can help you tailor your resume to some of these positions. And you can get a good idea, again, how to do that in the future. So you may not have to keep coming back to us for assistance, even though we love to see you guys as much as possible. Um, but we guys want you to also be independent and learn how to do these things on your own. So I would say number one, definitely get your resume reviewed. 
Um, a lot of positions will ask for a cover letter. If it's optional, still provide a cover letter, cover letter. So it's good to know how to do some of these things like resume, cover letter, uh, writing, um, any other documents. I've seen documents like letters of intent, uh, diversity um, type letters that they have to write for positions. I've seen all kinds of things. So um, definitely um, kind of search what's required for this position and then you can come in and see um, if we can help you prepare some of these documents. Um, and then what else? I would say mock interviewing. Eventually, hopefully, you will get an interview, right? And so we should also probably talk about any interview prep questions, mock interviews, things like that ahead of time, just so you're kind of prepared. Um, but yeah, other than that, what's up? Allison, I think that's great. I, I completely agree. Okay. We, <laughs> One more. You want me to? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we do things very similarly in block, um, especially if you're very unsure what direction you want to go. Um, but we, you know, I think it's really, and to go back and know it's like, We've said it a million times, but it's really about that networking, those informational interviews. Once you sort of land on, you know, a couple of different job titles that look interesting to you that you might want to pursue, then it's really about opening up that search um, and, and finding people in similar roles or who are hiring for similar roles and, and networking. And that's something that both Allison and I can help you with in terms of connecting you with employers because at the end of the day, that's that's the thing that you should be most using as a college student is is us to help you connect with employers. So, Erin, um, I do want you to just really oh, Tess, can, I, you have something? can I just add one thing to that too? I think one of the most fun things that I personally like about uh, the appointments is um, really kind of opening students up to different opportunities you know it's really easy that you, you you only know what you know and and maybe you only know the careers perhaps that your parents have or that you've seen on tv or that are sort of front and center um but there's so many really interesting jobs out there that you just didn't even know existed and yet because of the type of work that we do and that all the people that we talk to and you know we around doing this for a while, uh, we might be more familiar with some of those opportunities. And so we can probably kind of expand your, your sort of horizon of what you might be interested or even aware of. Absolutely. Um, with just a few minutes left, I want Erin Christensen to give us just a quick <laughs> overview of what fall might look like in terms of recruiting and how we're going to be moving forward with career fairs. Um, and employer engagement. And then we'll go around and just tell you a little bit more about how our offices will be operating this summer and into the fall um, hours and, and the services that we can provide. Erin, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're hoping to basically do everything that we've done before, just either in a virtual way or be able to do it in person. Um, we're kind of waiting to hear from UMKC on if there are restrictions to size of events. I can say that our um, career fairs um, will easily exceed whatever that restriction is. So we will be doing virtual fairs um, and you'll find if you have friends at other schools, pretty much every other school in our region at least is doing, um, is doing virtual fairs as well, which we're actually kind of excited about because I think it will give students more flexibility in um, how they meet with employers. And once that platform, once we've decided on that platform and we start having employers register for our fairs, which and fingers crossed will be in the next few weeks, um, Maggie and I will start putting together more YouTube videos and content on how to prepare for virtual fairs and how to use those platforms as well. Um, so I can definitely say that our fairs will be virtual. They'll still be in the same um, timeline um, where they, as they were in the past. So mid-September through about mid-October is when you'll see both block career, like block career fairs, but then also career fairs supporting other academic units as well. Um, 
I can, I'm predicting that our employers who typically do on-campus interviews will opt into doing those virtually. We are happy if you need this space that you can still use our interview rooms um, to do those virtual interview room or to do those virtual interviews. And if you need help with technology, we're absolutely able to support you with that as well. Um, I think scheduling, if you're used to how on-campus interviews work, scheduling would, st would still be done through Handshake as it had been before. It's just you won't be physically um, doing an interview with the employer in person. Um, I hopefully see a reality where we still have employers that opt into doing um, their information tables or even sessions on campus. Um, uh, we'll have to work through what the logistics for that looks like in terms of spacing and how many students can attend. Um, I've been talking to employers about doing virtual office hours as well. Um, if you've ever participated in those, employers come on campus and they just meet with students for 10 or 15 minutes at a time. Um, and we're still planning on doing mock, like our mock interview um, clinics that we've done for Management 301 and other academic um, or other classes outside of block. We'll still be doing those, but in a virtual <laughs> way as well. So our hope is that the type of employer activity that we've always done before will still offer just virtually. Um, some of it might be in person. And, um, but we're hoping that it also gives students more flexibility on when they can engage with employers. And if you're not on campus that day for classes, you can still hop onto your computer and, um, and engage with employers um, at your house or, um, or take a break at work or whatever you might be doing. Um, so that's a little bit of what fall looks like. As Jean mentioned before, it's all fluid. <laughs> so it's, um, we're tentatively making these plans um, with the understanding that it could change um, um, and we're, we're able to be flexible in, in, in changing the format of our events. Perfect. Yeah, and I want to jump in with the career fairs. Um, we're hosting, uh, actually Aaron and I just sat down earlier this week and which I guess was yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> only Tuesday. It just seems later. Than waiting. Um, but but we mapped out the schedule for all of the career fairs, and so we will plan on doing a nursing and pharmacy and health sciences career fair virtually. So, um, and I know that in the past there's been a criminal justice career fair, and we'll be working with the department to move that to a virtual environment. Also, education has a career fair that will be virtual. Um, in the past, we've done sciences and we're, we might be um, moving to uh, sciences and health sciences together. Um, communication studies, I know, has had their breakfast in the past and we're going to make a real effort to get those companies and organizations that hire for public relations, communications type roles that, that they'll probably be attending the big business computing and engineering career fair. Um, so for all of the career fairs on campus, and I really, really want to stress this, they're open to all students. So, so look for the company and the industry that seems interesting for you. Don't look at just, well, I'm not a business student, so I can't go to the business computing and engineering fair. They are open to everybody. So if the company you want to work for, or the organization you want to work for is at that fair, uh, do plan on attending the fair. Thank you so much, Tess and Erin. Okay, so we are just about at time, but I really quickly, um, I'm gonna start and then I'll send it to Molly, Jean, and Allie to give you just a little bit of info how to access us in our offices. We are open in block. Um, we might be virtual through the summer. Um, we might be back on campus at some point, um, but every service that we had when we were on campus is still available um, to our students, whether they are actively students or you are graduating. So we are completely open and free to alumni as well. So you can make those appointments on Handshake. We will still be uploading programming to YouTube, um, resumes, cover letters, interviewing, anything you need. We are open and here for you throughout the summer and forever. <laughs> all right. Our law services are available to all law students and alumni free of charge. Um, so it is an important distinction to make that our services are exclusive to those who are 
who are enrolled in law related programs. So pre-law students um, do need to use um, university career services. Uh, but once you are enrolled at the law school in a JD or an LLM program, our services are free to you. We are currently online, as Maggie mentioned, making available every resource that ordinarily would be available in person. Um, as many of you might be familiar, uh, law faculty run the show, and so we currently have a repopulation committee that is helping uh, determine how we're moving forward with virtual and in-person, uh, both academic and events. And so that includes uh, services for our office. So currently online, and we will see how we're moving forward, but then we'll communicate that to our students and alumni as we have decisions. The uh, Block Graduate Programs Office, you can get a hold of us uh, several different ways. We have an email account, blockgrad at umkc.edu. You can dial me directly at 816-235-5254. Again, 816-235-5254. And uh, if it's not about a Block Grad Program, if you, have some, if you want some insight on applying to a graduate program, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer those questions. I want to be helpful to you. I've been at UMKC 17 years, and I enjoy what we do a great deal. So anything that I can help a student with, I'm happy to do all I can for you. So let me know. And lastly, I'm over at UMKC Career Services, so our central office, um, again, it's a theme. We're all online as well. So you can make appointments with us on Handshake. Uh, we pretty much have every single appointment type available except our professional wardrobe program. Fortunately, that one's on hold. Uh, but once we get back on campus, we're going to start that one up again and open it up to students. Again, still trying to follow social distancing rules. <laughs> but uh, we want to get that open once we're back on campus. Um, but otherwise, all the other appointment types you can access or make an appointment on Handshake, either for phone, video, um, or virtual chat, which is just an email appointment. Um, and yeah, we. <laughs> you can also email me at murdochak at umkc.edu. Um, I check that one more regularly than probably the general, and I can also, I'm not the person to answer that question, I can definitely transfer over to someone who is. So I'm open to all career related questions. You can also contact um, Aaron Christensen, Tess, myself, or Allie via Handshake. There is a messaging feature on that as well. So feel free to message us there too. All right, well, thank you all for being here. We so appreciate it. Thank you to the panelists. Um, we will be uploading this video onto YouTube if you need to check back about any content or wanna share it with um, another student who needs this information, but stay safe, stay healthy, um, come see us if you need anything. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.